I do not want to see you buying 5 to 12 unit apartment buildings. I want you to buy this instead. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am James Wise. I will be your host. I will be the guy working with you, working with everyday people like you, everyday people like my guy, George. Long Beach, California, blue-collar motherfucker. George, I like you. I like your style. You seem like a stand-up dude, right? And uh, I've looked at a couple properties you've sent me, right? And... You know, you've talked to me about, like, your strategy, what you want to do, right? And, and you seem to really dig the idea of doing 5 to 12-unit apartment buildings. Now, I want to preface this with, like, kind of what I said at the beginning of the show, a little teaser there, right? I don't want you to buy 5 to 12-unit apartment buildings, George, at least not right now. I don't think that 5 to 12-unit apartment buildings are necessarily inherently bad. In all situations, but I do believe they're currently bad in your situation, George, because you're just getting started and you still have residential mortgages to work with. So we should utilize our residential mortgages first, okay? We don't want to move into the commercial loan space just yet because the residential loan space is going to be so much more attractive for you right now. And by my guesstimate, I assume you have at least nine of those left. So let's take a quick break, and I'm going to get into why I think it's so important for you to stick things out, knock out your nine residential mortgages first, and then and only then should we move on to five to 12 unit buildings. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now we get to do what we came here to do right the big stuff the important stuff the numbers right because when we're investing in real estate that's what really matters right it's the numbers right we're not traditional home buyers and sellers we're not looking at drapes this or that we're looking at the numbers and this property's got great ones okay 3186 west 98th cleveland 4 for 102 list price by the listing agent and the seller 225 and I think you got to go above that. I'd like to see you bid at least 230 to take it down because there's going to be a bidding war on this because this is, in my opinion, the greatest investment that a long-term buy-and-hold investor such as yourself could make. Now, I don't specifically mean 3186 West 98th is the greatest apartment building in the world. It's representative of the type of apartment building it is, right? It's a four-unit apartment building. Four-unit apartment buildings are what I feel are the greatest investment. I don't think this is like a bad four-unit building, right? But it's not like I'm trying to like tell you that, I don't know, like there's gold toilets or something, or like the tenants at this four-unit apartment building will pay more than the tenants down the street. Not the case, right? I just want you to focus on the overall strategy and how important four-unit apartment buildings are, right? Because when you're financing real estate, okay, there are apartment buildings that lenders love and there are apartment buildings that lenders hate, okay? There is residential financing and there is commercial financing. Now, residential financing is better than commercial financing. Our terms are more attractive. 30-year terms, you only put down 25%. It's based on how much you make your credit score, right? It's awesome. It's the best financing there is. The negative, though, right, is you could only get 10 of those mortgages, and, of course, you should use one on your house, right? So you only get nine for rental properties, okay? And it's limited 
to the type of properties. You can only do single families, duplexes, triplexes, quads. Quads, four unit apartment buildings. So this four unit apartment building, this is the most rent you're ever going to get out of one of those residential loans, okay? So that is the best type of financing you could ever do. This is the most rent you can get with the best financing. Now, commercial, that's five units and up, retail, this or that. The terms at commercial are a lot different, a lot uh, worse, right? You don't get 30-year terms. Uh, your down payment's going to vary. Uh, where the lender's actually loan is going to vary. Where the lender's loan uh, to the prince, like, where the building is, right? Sometimes you'll get lenders that will loan on properties in Ohio, but only to investors who live in like 20 states. Or maybe they will loan to people that live in your state, but they won't loan on a property that's in Ohio, but they would loan on a property that was in Pennsylvania. Things like that, right? It gets tricky. Down payments vary. Terms vary. It's not going to be 30 years. It's more like five with a 25-year AM. And guess what? All the interest is packed in the first seven years of a 25-year AM, so you're not even really paying down the principal by the time you got a refi. The whole thing's a mess, right? That's one part of it. That's why it's not as cool. Second part is the smaller the building, okay? The smaller the building when dealing with commercial financing, the less uh, desirable it is to lender, right? So if you're doing like commercial apartment buildings, right? Like lenders want to see like 50 units, 100 units, big multi-million dollar buildings. They don't want to see like five, six, seven, eight units, right? So if you're an investor out there and you're looking to get started, I don't think you're starting with a 100-unit apartment building. You're probably starting with something small. So a four-unit building is much better than like a five or a six or a seven or an eight, right? Financing's way better. The lenders actually really want to get that type of loan because we're talking about residential loans. Guess what? A quad is going to cost more money than a duplex or a little single-family rental, right? So this is like the best financing for the residential guy doing your loan, but Likewise, if you had like one unit higher, that would now be the crappiest type of financing for a commercial lender, right? So that that's why I love quads. Whenever a quad's available, folks, you should try to buy it. All of that is why I believe you'll have to go $5,000 above list price at least to get the opportunity to take down this quad. Nice quad on the west side. All their units, uh, you know, reasonable renovations, okay? Like I said earlier, it's not like there's anything like inherently special about this, right? Like, I've managed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units exactly like this, right? Like, you're going to get a normal C-grade property, C-grade performance, right? But the fact that you can finance it, that's what makes things so great, right? So, like, currently, uh, the rents are 675 695 695 and 800 But market rents on all these units, it's 750 a pop, right? So, like, three of the units are getting below market rent, and then one of the units are getting above market rent, right? I know sometimes when people watch my show... And I give the current rent, and it's 675 And I'm like, oh, but the market rent's 750 I know there's skeptics out there. They're like, dude, fuck this guy. He says that the rent's always higher. He's just trying to fucking sell us a song and dance. Well, I understand why you'd say that, folks. But look, one of these units right here, it's, I mean, it's on the listing, right? One of the units, seller's already getting 800 But I told you market rent, don't expect 800 right? Market rent, you should only expect 750 I don't know why. This person is specifically, oh, wait, actually, never mind. It actually says it right here. They got a, they got a little disclaimer because it was an Eden tenant who's temporarily paying 800 I don't know why it's like a temporary deal. Maybe, like, I've actually seen uh, things. I don't know if it was run through the Eden program, but I know we, like, have done stuff in the past. Like, I had this one four-unit apartment building. It's actually... Uh, has nothing to do with four-unit apartment buildings. It's just coincidence, I guess, right? But we took over this one four-unit apartment building on the west side of Cleveland, and we had a tenant paying, like, way more uh, than he should have been. And the only reason that that was happening is because he lived across the street, owned his own home, the house burned down, and he needed to be housed in this apartment building temporarily while the insurance company rebuilt his home. Like, things, things of that nature, right? So we don't know why this person is specifically getting a temporary uh, price hike in their rent, but... I, I call it like I see it, right? I'm not going to tell you 800 is achievable over and over and over because it's not, right? 750 is the market rent, right? And sometimes there's other scenarios where you see people getting higher rent too. Like I've seen uh, investors, right, they, you know, deal with tenants and they don't do proper tenant screening and uh, they'll find a tenant who wants to pay more for no background check. 
yeah, that tenant's going to pay more like twice, and then you're going to eventually have to evict them, right? They only want to do that because they don't like plan on actually paying uh, the rent very often, right? You only get above market rent if the tenant is a bad tenant, can't live anywhere else, or for like crazy random circumstances like the fire I talked about, right? So I give it to you straight, skeptics. I don't always just tell you the, the market rent's higher than the current rent. If the current rent's higher than the market rent, I tell you, right? So 750, so 3K, uh, 36K for the year. You run your normal fixed variable expense estimates, which I go over on almost every single show of the MLS Search and Analysis Show, right? We've got over 1,100 of these episodes on Holton Wise TV. So if you ain't subscribed yet, motherfucker, get on that because I explain how these numbers work. We're not going to go through that right now, uh, but you should know how I come up with these numbers if you watch the show with any relative frequency, right? So after that, I believe a clear, true NOI, a little over 18 and a half. And at the price point, if we get lucky enough to take it down at 230, all you got to do is put in 57 and a half. Then we get the bank to come in and kick in 172,500. And the tenants, of course, will pay off that 172,500 mortgage for you and kick in a projection of 17% on your 50k or whatever it was right 57 and a half right so you make a 17 percent roi you got four tenants paying off your hundred seventy two thousand dollar mortgage i dig it this is a c-grade property love this neighborhood solid neighborhood looks to be a nice solid brick building nothing out of the ordinary here looks like a reasonable building to me of course this video is the first step of the due diligence process, though. We will, of course, want to make this contingent on a third-party home inspection. Even though there's going to be multiple bidders on this one, we still have to do due diligence. We still have to go out there, get that home inspector in there. He's going to spend several hours in there. We're going to get like a 50 to 100-page report. It's a 100-year-old building. That's normal, and I can go through that and let you know if there's anything out of the ordinary. But from where I'm sitting, this looks like a hell of a deal. We got to move quick. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.